Amen. Good morning and welcome to the Gateway. Can we do something just maybe a, a slightly different? Can we welcome our online community into the service of today? Amen. We're glad that you all have stopped by to join us. And uh, we do post the messages every Sunday. And it's such a blessing. Our Sunday morning services and also our Wednesday night Bible study. So thank you and welcome. Welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Look at your neighbor also and say, welcome. 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 Okay. In case you didn't feel welcome, in case nobody talked to you today, I think we're all got you covered now. Everybody has said something to someone. Amen. Well, today is an awesome service because today is our healing service. And I'm telling you, there is that atmosphere of expectation in the house and what's the praise and worship just awesome oh, yeah. Yeah. i tell you what it, it's hard once you, once you go in it's hard to pull out you know but it's it was amazing and i thank god because everything that we do today is going to be centered around god just touching you and he's here to heal you physically emotionally spiritually and uh, you know what no pressure all the pressure is on god so matter of fact just say god it's on you oh, <laughs> right, right, right. He's the only one that can do it. We have we have no power within us except for the Holy Spirit that comes and flows through us. But God is the one that does the healing. So I'm thankful that he's here today and God is interested in touching you. Matter of fact, one more time, look at your neighbor and say, God wants to touch you. God wants to touch you. He really does. He really does. So we're excited about that. Amen. All right. And also, so welcome. Also, uh, we have a pre-service prayer every Sunday that starts at 9.30. Um, it is incredible. Um, it's, it's just something I've really come to look forward to. It's good to connect with people and to uh, put your needs out there. We have a house full of people that love you and that will pray. And we watch God do amazing things. We have a really phenomenal prayer chain. We really do. And... Um, uh, that's accessible at any time for prayer, uh, for every prayer need by text or email. And we have the information up there. So if you need to uh, get your prayer out there, you want people to connect with you, um, that's definitely Miss, the lovely Miss Catherine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she always looks so lovely. I tell you, I just, you know, it's not about what you wear when you come to church, but I do be looking at Catherine to see what she got on. Because <laughs> she always looks so lovely. She's so beautiful. And, you know, she's blessed me a few times since people ask me, where do you get your outfit from? I said, oh, from Catherine's. <laughs> <laughs> she's got good taste. <laughs> and she is an amazing, her and Paul are amazing leaders for the prayer ministry. And I really thank God for you. Amen. Yeah, they, they get it out there. I'm telling you. You know, they, they are, they're open and approachable. And because of you, where people are connecting and we're seeing lives change. So thank you so much for that. And we also have our Wednesday night um, oasis at 5.30. Uh, definitely a time of praise and worship and Bible study. I hate that I missed, I had to do some things for work this last Wednesday, but I'm telling you, Bible study is amazing. I, one little footnote, Daniel gave a, um, went into the history one time about what happened to God's people and how they were all murdered and killed. I kid you not, when Dana got done with that Bible study, you almost didn't know what, it was so heavy. Like, you almost didn't know what to do. Normally, we were like, hey, we were like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, the weight of God's word is, is amazing. It is really amazing. When you get in there and you dig and see what God has for you, oh, I'm telling you, spend time in God's word. If you really haven't done it, I encourage you to do it. It will change your life. It changes your perspective. Amen. And in light of the word, wasn't last week just really incredible? I mean, yeah. last week, I think that was yeah. a tag team last week, wasn't yeah. it? Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Mike and David, they just tore the house down. It was amazing. So I thank God that we have people in this ministry that love God's word, just like those, yeah. like our leadership does. It's amazing. Amen. Also, on um, September 10th at 3.30, we have our mi women's ministry. Yeah. And that is always good. I'm, I finally, Gloria, I finally get a chance to be a part of that. I'm so happy I work on Saturdays. That is a Saturday, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> finally, I was working. I mean, God blessed me with the schedule. I asked for Monday through Friday to get off at a certain time. That's exactly what I have. So I'm, yeah. I'm so grateful. And so we have a wonderful woman's um, uh, ministry leader. That's Glory. If you have any questions, please get in contact with her. And she can fill you in on all the details. So ladies, let's get together. You know, let's talk. 
talk. You know how we do. All right. We talk about Jesus too, but we can talk. So yeah. anyway. All right. And there's also three ways that you can give uh, tithes and offerings. You can give online. You can give by mail. And we also have a box in the back. So feel free to give. Thank, and we thank you for your giving. It makes a difference in this ministry. I tell you, when I was out of work for three months and my money, my, my cash flow was getting a little bit low, I was so thankful. My first check, it didn't look like what the other ones were, but I was grateful to give. I'm like, thank you, God. You know, I believe in sowing into the kingdom and into the lives of other people. And so that was a blessing. So let's go ahead and Dana's going to uh, give the word today. So let's pray. Father, we thank you so much uh, for blessing us with such an incredible leader. And I thank you for the word that is on the inside of him. We ask for protection of that word. Let it completely be delivered, Lord, in the way which you would have for it to come. Lord God, we thank you, God, that you have taken time to nurture that on the inside of him. And we ask in Jesus' name, give us hearts that are open, mm -hmm. not analytical, but open to receive, Holy Spirit, what you have for each one of us in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that we would do with the word like we eat fish. We, we eat the fish and the, the meat and we throw away the bones, Lord. Whatever is for us, we want to consume it. Mm -hmm. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have exactly what we need in this house today. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everybody said? Amen. 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 All right, Dana. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Amen. Another glorious squim day. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I'm still amazed. Me and Cheryl sit out on the porch pretty often. And uh, it just, it's such a nice place to live. It is. We're blessed, I'm telling you. Mm. You know? Amen. You know, God love, God really loves you guys and me and Cheryl yeah. because he, he called us to squim. Yeah. <laughs> Can't speak about everybody else this morning, but I know he loves us. That's right. <laughs> that almost sounds wrong, Lord. <laughs> I know you love everybody. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm cutting up with you a little bit. But, yeah, but praise God. And so um, I know it was mentioned that we're going, the teens, the teen group is going on a trip next Saturday morning. Yeah. Leaving from the parking lot at 9 a.m., we're going to Merrimere Falls and Crescent Lake. Okay, so if uh, if you have a teen who's interested, or if you have a teen that uh, that maybe isn't interested yet, you've got time to get them interested. Okay, <laughs> and I have some uh, some release forms that have to be signed. Okay, so if you have a, a kid going, I need you to do these forms and get them back to me. Okay, it's basically a transportation form, and more or less it says that well, whenever your kid is with us. If something happens, we can take care of your kid, yeah. and we can get them back to you safe, okay? And we need that. Amen. So if you need one of these, slip up your hand. Anybody want them? Okay. Right behind me. Oh. Thank you. Anybody else? We're good? Okay, I've already given out some. I know David and Angie have them, and I gave Mike and Rachel one as well. Cool. Yeah, if you have more than one kid going with us, um, you can just use one form and put both names on, okay? Mm -hmm. So we'll be good. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And another thing, we've got quite a few people traveling. I think everyone is trying to milk this last little yeah. bit of summer. <laughs> you know, and I understand. So we've got several people traveling and doing different things today. So, uh, you know, just if you remember, there, there's people that are on the road. So right. pray that God will protect them, give them good visits, and bring them back safe. Amen. Praise God. And so, yeah, so we're going to jump into the message. But before we do, uh, I guess before we, there we go. We're almost there. Here we are. Thank you, Mike. Okay. I put this up because uh, <laughs> it isn't just for Catherine. And the last week is your phone. But no, we've had a lot of phones. Just the last, Almost every service lately, we've just had phones going off and phones yeah. going off and phones going off. So yeah. let's try not to do that. Yeah. Okay? Amen. It's really easy. Yeah. Really, just flip the button. Now, if, if, if you've got somebody... If somebody is, if you got somebody who who is an emergency where they have to get right. touch with you, please just cut the volume down a little bit where you can hear it. Okay, but if you, if it is an emergency or a crisis, just cut it off and you can cut it right back on when you take off. Thank you for that. I feel like a movie theater. <laughs> yeah. So praise God. But yeah, we're busy people, aren't we? 
So today we're going to have, we're, we're having a healing service. So I have a message that's a little bit shorter. We are going to pass the mic around for people to share testimonies. And so I'm going to need the mic at some point. Thank you, Mike, for giving me the mic. <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> okay. So today the message we're, we're looking at is, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Yeah. I had an entirely different message that I was working on. And uh, just working on it, working on it, working on it. And I knew I was missing something. And the Holy Spirit just spoke right into it. And said, go here. I said, okay. You know, he has the right to do that. Yep. Amen. When he says, go here, we're supposed to say, yes, sir. <laughs> so, yeah, so with that in mind, we're going to jump right into the word. Okay. A little bit of scripture on the front part here, but I'm not going to teach through all of it, but there's some things I want to jump into. Okay, this is Mark chapter 6, verse 1 through 6. And it says, afterward, Jesus left Capernaum and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. On the Sabbath, he went to teach in the synagogue. Everyone who heard his teaching was overwhelmed with astonishment. They said among themselves, what incredible wisdom has been given to him? Where did he receive such profound insights? And I have specific things underlined for a reason in here. Okay. And it says, and what mighty miracles flow through his hands? The people were just, they were confounded, confused. They were overwhelmed with what was going on. Ah, and so in verse 3, it says, Isn't this Mary's son, the carpenter, the brother of Jacob, Joseph, Judah, and Simon? And don't his sisters all live here in Nazareth? And they were, took offense at him. Whoa. Jesus said to them, A prophet is treated with honor everywhere except his own hometown, yeah. among his relatives, and in his own house. Look at verse 5 here. He was unable. Whoa. Jesus, the Lord God himself, was unable. That doesn't, doesn't even sound come right coming out of our mouth, does it? Oh, okay. Jesus being unable to do any great miracle in Nazareth except to heal a few. And you can see they kind of minimize just a few, a few minor things. Yeah. Okay, A few sick people. They had, they had some issues and they needed healing. But he, he couldn't do any big things. He could only do a few small things there. Oh. By laying his hands upon them, he was amazed at the depth of their unbelief. Amen. Oh. And unbelief here, it means a lack of faith. Yeah. Okay. And so I want to zoom in on verse 3 here. Okay. Isn't this Mary's son, this is what we just looked, read right in here, okay, right here. But I want you to look at the, what the people people's response. They saw all the stuff, he was, you know, the, man, where did he get this stuff? How is he doing this stuff? Wow. And they said, isn't this Mary's son? You see him going into this mental thing here. What they're doing is they're thinking themselves out of their provision is what they're doing. Right. So isn't this Mary's son, the carpenter? He's a one worker. The brother of these guys. Oh, and his sisters. You know, we see his sisters. You know, they're here. They're here every day. We see them. They're our neighbors. You know, we remember him. He was our neighbor too. And that's something. Yeah. It says, and they took offense at him. And that's something. It's amazing that that. Once they, once they put Jesus in a box and defined who he was and who he could not be, the Bible says they were offended. That's a big deal. So how did their lack of belief in who Jesus was stop Jesus from performing miracles? Was Jesus any less powerful? No. Could he still heal and do the miracles and do all that stuff? Yeah, Jesus didn't change. Right. But the people couldn't receive from the Son of God because they didn't believe him to be that. Mm. Okay. All right. The box they put him in didn't have enough power to help him. Mm. Mm. It's terrible. All right. Because, see, to them, Mary's son couldn't heal the sick. You with me? He, he couldn't heal the sick. Why? Jesus the carpenter couldn't open the eyes of the blind. Mm. Jesus the brother. Of these guys, he couldn't raise the dead. No. Jesus, the flesh and blood neighbor, could only do normal, everyday flesh and blood things. See, it came down to, to 
to who they believed he was. Who they believed he was. That's a big deal, church. Who do you believe he is today? We're going we're to hit that again in a minute. You know, since they didn't believe he was God, they could not receive what the Lord God wanted to give them. I'll share, I'll share a brief testimony where to keep going. Well, years, I've had a few times over the years, but one time kind of it, it kind of startled me. Um, we were in leadership in Montana, and uh, we were, I don't know, I was at a, a table doing a sign-up for prophetic training, because we've done a lot of prophetic training, you, most of you guys know that, right. over the years, and work with teams, and travel and stuff, and teaching prophecy. But I was sitting there, and these, these two ladies were walked up to the table, and right as they started coming, the Holy Spirit rose up, and it, and it was like, I want to share something with her. And I was, and I was like, okay. And I was sitting there, what do you want to share? What do you want to share? And as they got closer, Holy Spirit started backing off. I was like, wait a minute. You stirred me up. What's going on? And they came up to the table. And when they got there, I, it's like the Holy Spirit was quenched. He was just gone. And I was like, what's going on? And she started talking. And as she talked, I could tell that she didn't believe in prophecy. She didn't believe that God wanted to speak to her. Isn't that something? And so what it was is she had offense against the Lord expressing himself in that way. So it quenched the Holy Spirit in me who wanted to bless her. Yeah, and I've, and I've had other people over years I've been praying with. I've been like, God, and they, they like, I, I really need something. They were in a tough spot. Yeah. And, and and the Lord would just not, not speak because it was them or where they were at or something was off, okay? And so he's God and we're not. God loves everybody equally, Amen. but he can't move in everybody's life equally because they won't let him. Mm -hmm. It's not his fault. It wasn't Jesus' fault that he couldn't heal everybody in that town. So, and I mean, that it startled me whenever Holy Spirit backed off. It's like, I was, I was upset. I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I felt like you had something here. And I'm, what's going on? And so I actually, I almost got upset. I thought there was something wrong with you, Dana. <laughs> you know, because if, if you really care about people, you know, you, you won't, you always want God to touch them. But only God knows the heart. Only God knows what's really going on there. And only God can connect with them where they're at. We just do our best. But I want to kind of keep moving here. So, church, this is really, this is the most important question each one of us will answer in this lifetime. This is the most important question anybody will answer in this lifetime. Just one question. Who do I believe that Jesus is? That is the most important question for mankind to answer. Period. I mean, there's a lot of other questions, but none of them trump this one. Who do you say he is? That's huge. Even when I thought about it, I was like, wow, God. I've just not seen it like this before. I was, I was looking at this. I was like, wow, God, that's the truth. This is the most important question for everybody. Yeah. It was so important that Jesus even asked his disciples. Yeah. Matthew 16, 13 through 16. The Bible says, now, when Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they answered, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah are just one of the prophets. 15. He said to them, But who do you say I am? <coughs> Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, the Son of the living God. And I want to kind of touch on something here. It says, Who do the people say, but who do you say? Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about Jesus. What do you say? Who do you say he is? That's good. I don't care if the whole world's saying he's something else. Who do you say he is? This is one of those things that this isn't a you know this isn't a cultural question. This isn't a you know what my friends think question. This is a you and a you and Jesus rubber meet in the road question. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care what everybody else thinks. Is he the Lord God or is he just one of the prophets? Is he a good teacher? Mm -hmm. Is he just you know just a guy who had the great ideas? Is he an angel? No, he's not an angel. People believe that junk. That is not Bible. He's the son of the living God. He is. He's the anointed one. He's the Messiah. He's the only way into heaven. He's the only way to be restored with Father. He's the only way to live a successful life right here. I mean, we 
to discipline ourselves to death and still not change enough to make any real difference. You know? Mm. So, and, I, and I, I've already hit this, but right here, and I just went over all of that, but man, there are churches that say he's an angel. Look, there, 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 there are church groups that say he was just a prophet. Yeah. Oh, oh. You know, there are people that say, well, he was a great teacher. Oh, he's a great teacher. Well, he was. He was a great teacher. He was a prophet of the Most High God. He was never an angel, though. <laughs> no. He was an angel, and we're not angels. We love people who are nice, but no. No, angels are ministers. They're servants for us, church. That's what the Bible says. They're servants for those who are heirs of salvation. That's what the angels do is they carry out Father's will, Jesus' will, and Holy Spirit's will, and they help us live a successful life. Amen. That's their role. So no, Jesus wasn't an angel, and neither are you and I. Even on our best day, we're better than that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Praise God. What was that, brother? That's right. We're anointed. They're, they're not. They're powerful, but they're not anointed. They don't carry the presence of the Lord Jesus like we do. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Once again, but who do you say that I am? I know I've hit this a few times because this is a big, this is this is like a deciding moment here. You know, is is he the Lord God to you? Amen. Amen. Is he really? Is he the Messiah? Yeah. Is he God's best for our life Amen. or not? There's no plan B for us, church. He's it and we're it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and fortunately for us, everybody, everybody trusts Jesus in the game. There ain't nobody on the bench. Yeah. We're all in. Yeah, thank God for that, man. We're in the game until we're in glory. Oh. But another question here, and we've already answered this, but are you sure, like really, really, really sure in your heart, I'm not just talking about this, this thing going on in your head here, are you sure at the core of your being that Jesus is the Lord God himself and that God raised him from the dead? Amen. 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 I like that. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Well, you know, that's it. You do that. And you say, Jesus, I believe, save me. Hmm. Guess what? The Lord God just came through for you yeah. in a huge way. Yeah. It's just wonderful. Yeah. Because, see, if you're in Christ and he is the, the, the Lord God himself to you, hmm. the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, yeah. it says, For if you publicly declare with your mouth mm -hmm. that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll experience salvation. And since you've experienced that, if you've really <coughs> trusted in him, it says that since we're his true children, if you've trusted Jesus, you are in the family. Amen. You're just in. Right. There ain't no more out for you. You're in. Amen. But we qualify to share all his treasures. Isn't that good news? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Amen. Well, I'm glad I don't have to wing it on my own treasures. <laughs> <laughs> for indeed, we are heirs of God himself. And since we're joined to Christ, we also inherit all that he is. I love this translation. All that he is and all that he has. Isn't that neat? Amen. It's not just about his provision and him taking care of us. It's about him. Amen. He is our center. He is our focus point. You know, he is, you know, in life, you know, he is your job. You know, we, want, we have to make money, but he's your job. He's your healing. He's your help. He's your strength. He's your peace. You, you see what I'm saying? If you look for something from his hand, that's okay sometimes. But if you look to him, you'll always get what you need. So keep him first. No matter what the need is, say, Jesus, thank you that that's who you are in my life. He is all these things. I remember it startled me one time. There was I was teaching a large group. And uh, there was somebody raised their hand and said, man, I need a job. And so we prayed for that. Right in the middle of that, the Lord said, tell him that I'm his job. Huh. <laughs> to, to focus on me and everything else will take care of itself. Yeah. 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 
and I was like, wow, that's cool. I was like, <laughs> maybe not what he wanted to hear at the time, but I was like, that's really cool. Because isn't it the truth? You keep him first, and everything else will work out. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Praise God. It's fun. A lot, a lot of good stuff in the Word of God. Mm. But see, in Jesus, we are qualified. We're qualified to share all of his treasures. We're qualified. You know, you're not going to get any more qualified, you know, a year down the road once you sort out everything a little better. <laughs> you know? You know, you're not going to just somehow or another wake up one day and say, whew, thank God I got big girl with everything in my life now. I'm qualified to receive this stuff. Uh, <laughs> no, as soon as you said, Jesus, I trust you, and you stepped into, into the family of God, right then you were qualified. Right. None of us are perfect in this room. None of us have it all sorted out. Right. And guess what? None of us will, even when we depart, drop the flesh, and go home. Amen. We're still going to have things we could be working on. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't have to come, would he? Yeah. He's the only one who can meet Father's standard complete. So just keep in mind that you're qualified right now where you sit to receive everything you need. Yeah. And see, this is a big deal with receiving. We're receiving for God. This is a huge thing, church. So many believers have this mindset that sees a day down the road when God will come through. Yeah. yeah, they're always looking to tomorrow's provision. They're always, look, man, one day, God, you're going to meet this need. One, oh man, one day, Hallelujah! One day, <laughs> when I get there, it's going to be so good. Yeah. When, when, yeah. when? You know, your God's a now God. Now, yeah. yeah. When you need your provision, right now. God, yeah, you'll probably need something else tomorrow, but you need it now. <laughs> and see, that's a big deal with Christians is where. A lot of times we think, well, you know, one day or someday or later or when I sort this out or when I break that sin or when I break that, you know, we're always a, a future provision people for the most part as Christians. Oh. I'm going to tell you what, that is a lie of the devil. Yeah. It is a lie. Oh, yeah. If you're never quite there, it keeps your heart in a place of unbelief. Yeah. You know that. Amen. If it ain't quite time for you, are you really going to get a hold of Jesus? like you need to? Are you waiting for some kind of glorious moment? Oh, now's the day. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> it doesn't work like that, church. No. So I'm, I'm going to suggest that if you have a need, you just grit your darn teeth and say, right now, in Jesus' name, right now, I want that provision you promised me because I'm qualified according to the word of God. Guys, we got to be quicker to draw lines and say, no more. No more. It's not that we get nasty with people and rude and stuff, and we won't get rude with God. But the Bible says, hey, he meets your needs now. He heals your sickness now. He takes care of us now. So, yeah, we're all hoping for something in the future. But if you've got a real need, don't just walk around wondering when. You know, Give Jesus no rest until you see his provision in the land of the living. Give him no rest. Amen. If you don't get it today, be just as persistent tomorrow. Amen. I'll tell you, rattle doors off heaven until you get your provision. Yeah. Yeah. Give him no rest. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what, he loves that. Yes. You think you're going to wear Jesus out? Not hardly. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, parents, how much would it upset you if you had a glorious thing to give your kid and mm -hmm. your kid would not leave you alone until you gave it to him? Mm -hmm. Oh, would you be upset with him? Shoot, no. You'd be like, man, yeah, oh, I'm glad they want it. Yeah. I'm glad they want it. They're not like the other person over here who don't care, man. They want it, so they're definitely going to get theirs. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, they need to work on something for a little bit over here, but <laughs> they're going to get theirs. Right. Yeah, but give God no rest. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to keep going. I just we had something else stirring here. Like, I get to thinking about all these things. It's like, yeah. I feel like I need to go here, okay? I'm going to touch it because we're talking about healing. All right. Uh, I'm going to share this later in the next time I'm not. Uh, a lot of you guys know I served in the military. I'm a veteran. And I know we have other veterans in here. Thank you guys for serving. Uh, and I got I got really sick with Gulf War syndrome. I was in the Gulf War and before and after a little bit over there. And I got really sick. And I was sick for uh, uh, two and a half years with that. 
thought I was going to die. I mean, I was bedridden with it. It was terrible. But the thing is, is I started off with polite prayers. You know? <laughs> when I first got sick, I started off with polite, Lord, please, thank you. Yeah. And then nothing happened. <laughs> and I got sicker. Yeah. And then I was like, Lord, I really need this. Yeah. So I ramp it up. And that's what it means. It means ask, what is it, seek, mm -hmm. and you, wait a minute. I'm sorry, is it ask, seek, and find? Ask, right. seek, and knock. Right. That's a process in the Bible. You see that? You ask politely first. Then you seek out, God, what am I missing? What's going on here? And then if that doesn't work, you start knocking the door off heaven. That's the biblical process. You start off with a nice thing, and then you get, Lord, where's my permission at? And you're like, come on in! Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's teaching the novel there. That's the progression. That's right. So anyway, I progressed pretty quick through that because after several months of being really sick, and I was still working a full-time job, yeah. I, you know, I was self-employed. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't no days off, man. Mm -hmm. You know, a day off is no money if you're self-employed. That's true. Mm -hmm. You know, there were no benefits other than yeah. get your butt out there and take care of it. <laughs> um, but my prayer actually went from this big, elaborate, pleasant thing to heal me or kill me. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I was sick. I was like, heal me or kill me. I do not care which, but do something quick because yeah. I'm tired of this, God. Yeah. I'm tired of it. Mm. And when I got into that place, mm. there was a sweetness of the Holy Spirit because I wasn't being mean to him, but there was a sweetness because yeah. it came down to me and Jesus. There was no plan B. There was no other option. Mm -hmm. It wasn't flowery and pretty, but it was real. Mm -hmm. Okay? And God did heal me. It took two and a half years, but he completely healed my body. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it was a miracle. It was an absolute miracle what he did. And I've talked about it in detail more, but I just want to touch that today. Yeah. Is, you know, um, guys, you know, be nice to God, be polite, be respectful, be honoring, yeah. but be real. Yeah. Be real with your God. Amen. All right. So let's keep going. Hmm. So I want us to do something. Okay. On the count of three. Okay. I want you to raise your hands. We're going to do this together. Say, so I am qualified. Okay, ready? So raise your hands. Get it up. It's a good thing to lift holy hands to God. Yeah. Okay? On the count of three, say it like you mean it. Say, I'm qualified. Ready? One, two, three. I am qualified. Yes. Feels good. Yeah. <laughs> it's the truth. The truth is setting you free today. Setting me free, too. All right, now we're going to take it a step up. Now look at the person sitting next to you. Point them. And on the count of three, we're going to say, in Jesus, you're qualified, okay? So it's okay that normally it's not, normally it's rude to point, but go ahead and point. You're like, damn, I got you. I got you. All right, okay. On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. In Jesus, you're qualified. That's the truth. That's right. That's the truth. Oh, praise God. That's fun, isn't it? Amen. <laughs> but you know, his victory, his victory gives us unrestricted access to all the treasures in the family vault. Amen. Amen. Yeah, the family vault. I've told him this before. Here's the family vault. Yeah. You remember? This is the treasure chest. Every promise in here is yes and amen. Yes. It is. Every one. Yes. Every one. In Jesus. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. So run to the vault, man. Run to the vault. Say, I am qualified. I need this. Yeah. I need this, and I need it now. So if you have a need today, any need, mm -hmm. Paul says in Philippians 4.19, and my God yeah, will yeah. meet all your needs That's according good. to hit to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I like it all. Do you have a need that doesn't fit under all? <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. And I, I got it because I, I say this often. Yes, you're special, but you're not that special. <laughs> Whatever your need is, he provided for it. Yeah. You know? yeah. And sometimes we feel like, oh, I'm the only one. Yeah. Remember, I remember Elijah. Oh, only me. Oh, yeah. uh, by the way, Elijah, I have 7,000 who have a thousand needs, just so you know you're not the only one. So, That's right. so just please remember that yeah. your God 
will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory, not according to what we have. Okay. And you know, you know, there's no more provision coming, church. Everything we'll ever need was provided for at the cross. Everything. You know, God isn't speaking and creating new stuff because you're a special case. Or I'm a special case. No, everything. Everything, everything, everything Amen. was provided for through his death, burial, and resurrection. You, Nothing else has come. It's already there. We yeah. just have to tap into it. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Isn't this word wonderful, church? Yeah. Amen. Man. I mean, I love preaching. I'm called to do this. But, yeah. but I'm just amazed. Even while I'm preaching, I'm like, wow, God, you really said that. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm, just, I'm always amazed at the scripture. And every time I read yeah. the scripture, it's amazing. Let me share one other thing before I keep going. And some of these stories you'll hear because they're just life changing. I share them from time to time. But, you know, John Lake, the healing crews in Spokane and, and uh, his ministry, yeah. he said he met a man at one time and it was the most anointed man he'd ever met in his life. He said he'd been in the room with the man. He said the power of God, the Holy Spirit was so strong. He's like, my gosh, Lord. He was asking, he said, Jesus, what is it about this guy? What are you doing in his life that makes him so anointed? And he said, and one day he was just sitting in the room, they were at a meeting, whatever, and they were praying, and he opened his eyes and glanced at the man. And the man was holding the scripture. He was holding the word. And he was he was in the Bible, and he was just sitting there quietly. And he was just crying and kissing the Bible. He was going, oh. He was just he was so in love with the word of God. He was just crying in the scripture and he was kissing the Bible. And John Lake said, when I saw that, I knew why he was so annoying. Come on. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to be a peculiar people. We're supposed to be a different generation. We're supposed to do things different. We're supposed to look different. Yeah. We're supposed to act different, yeah. church. We are. Amen. When we have a need, we know that our Lord God helps us. We know he comes through. Yeah. And I don't care if everybody's just fretting and freaking out and doing whatever else. I don't care. Yeah. You shouldn't care. Love them, bless them, and try to help them in whatever their journey is. Mm -hmm. But you and Jesus sort it out. Yeah. You sort it out and then walk it out. Whatever yeah. he tells you, do that. Yeah. you got to get a hold of Jesus in your need. Church, you've got to. And I got all these things stirring I want to share with you, but I'll try to wait till later. But I'll just pass the mic and let you guys share later. I'm going to share one other story here. Um, God's healed me multiple times. I'm not going to share all of them because, I mean, like multiple times, he's radically healed me. Yeah. And I've seen him heal a lot of other people over the years. Yeah. But whenever you're in a tough spot, you got to find out what God wants you to do and not just do what you want to do. Yeah. 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 Hang in there. Um, one example of this is I went through a really nasty season of some just, and I say, man, you're going to laugh when I say this, of digestive problems, a really nasty season of digestive problems. Mm -hmm. But And I'll share because I'm not, I, don't, I don't mind doing this, but stuff just wasn't working. Yeah. It just wasn't working. I mean, sometimes I'd go four or five days without even going to the restroom. Mm. And hurting and sick and felt yeah. terrible. And what do I do? And I'm just, this is between us, yeah. okay? You do what you feel like you're supposed to. Yeah. But for me, it was, Lord Jesus, what do I do with this? Yeah. I know you're my healer. Yeah. Do, I, do, I, do, I, do I walk this out with you? Do I go to a doctor? Do I do something? What do I do? Yeah. And the Lord said, the Lord spoke to me, Holy Spirit, and basically I'm going to summarize. He said, me and you are going to walk this out. Okay? We did. I never went to a doctor. That, I walked through that for almost 13 years. Wow. 13 years. Of, of maybe using restroom one time a week if I was forced to. Bloated and hurt. But I've heard from God. Yeah. This between you and God. Okay, yeah. personal responsibility. Don't say, my pastor told me to do this. Don't you put, don't you, <laughs> don't you do it. Don't you do it. That's See, right. that's the way I live, church. Yeah. Yeah. When something serious happens, I'm like, God, what do I do with this? Remember the people in the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit came and the city shook? They said, what does this mean and what do I do? Yeah, yeah. That's what the people said. When you have a need, 
you need to do that. You need to say, God, what does this mean? And what do I do? That's important. Because sometimes he'll, he'll tell you what you need to do. And he'll tell you how it works. But I walked that thing out for 13 years, and God radically healed me. And I've had zero digestive issues since. Without drugs, without medicine, without anything, me and Jesus walked out because he told me we were going to walk. Yeah. Yeah. See, once you have a, a revelation, you can stand on it, and you can walk, and you can do it. Amen. But you got to get all the Jesus there. Yeah. Sorry, I'm kind of mixing stuff in here. Right. But, but I learned. Through that Gulf War syndrome and, and all, uh, almost dying with that stuff, I learned that the Lord my God will take care of me, church. Yeah. You know, our life's in his hands. And, and if that wasn't enough, he said, if, if my hand isn't big enough for you, you're in Father's hand too. Mm -hmm. And nobody can snatch you out of Father's hand. Mm -hmm. You know, your days are numbered by God, not by sickness or disease or some weird thing going on. If God can't hang on to you, God help all of us. Amen. You know? Or somebody help us if God can't do it. I don't know. But it, it's just ridiculous. But let's keep going. I wasn't trying to get too far out of there, but I just feel like the Holy Spirit's wanting me to hit these things along the way. Yeah. You know? Amen. But just make it a lifestyle of praying and seeking God's face in your need mm -hmm. until you get the provision or you get a plan mm -hmm. to walk in the provision. Whatever the provision looks like. Sometimes it's not what we want. Yeah. But it's always right when he gives it to you. Okay, just a little bit more, guys. We'll keep going. Oh. But you know, I, I do want to hit this also. You know, the Bible does not promise that we won't struggle. Amen. I mean, there are people preaching, you know, health, wealth, and happiness. Well, guess what? That is a byproduct of Jesus, but you don't start there. You don't. You know? It, you know the Bible doesn't say you'll never struggle financially. You'll never struggle physically. You'll never struggle emotionally. You know? You'll never have difficulty in relationships. <laughs> relationships are probably the toughest one of those bunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. But you know, the, those tough times are really important. They really are. Um, that's what grows us up, church. That's what matures us, the tough spots. That God didn't send them. God didn't, you know, he doesn't do bad things to us. We have a whole life and a whole world to, to give us all the difficulty we need to grow. It's a fertile place. It's a fertile place. You know? But those tough places are where we get to know the Lord God in new ways. You know? Until you're sick, you don't know the Lord God's your healer, do you? No, you've heard about him. Sounds like a really great guy. <laughs> but you don't know him until you're in a tough spot and he meets that need. You know, whenever you, ain't, when you don't have a dollar to your name and you're broke yeah. and the Lord provides for you financially through whatever means that is, right. guess what? Amen. You know that Je Jehovah Jireh, your provider right. there, that you didn't know before that. Mm -hmm. That's right. Isn't that good? Amen. It's all about relationships. It's all about being more like Jesus. You know, Jesus went through all of that. He, said he was tempted to every point like us, yet without sin. He went through all that stuff. We just, it's not all in the Bible because there wasn't enough room to write about it. You know, been too much scripture for us to handle. But he, he went through all of it. So he understands. And that's why he can help us in our difficulty. You know? I want to touch just a couple more things with this. You know, we don't have to walk through every hardship in life to appreciate God's provision. We don't. I'm not saying we got to go through just an endless testing and trial. We don't have to yeah. do that. No. No, what it is, God walks, God knows our life. And he positioned us when and where we're supposed to be. And he knew what we we're going to encounter along the way to give the right ingredients for us to be more like Jesus. So that's our journey. We want to interstate, man. We want to just get in Jesus and get in that luxury cruiser and just, yeah, baby, head for glory. That's what we want to do. But in reality, if we saw it, our life would look more like a bumper pool table. <laughs> it would. Yeah, I feel like I've been banged up a little bit. How about you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But thank you, if you stick with Jesus, there's always good there for you. There's always victory there. Mm. So those tough places have tremendous value to us personally, but guess what? Those tough things also have benefit for those around us. See, that's the thing we miss sometimes. Unfortunately, it's not just about us. We'd like to say it was. We'd like to believe it was. But no. The truth is, fortunately, 
Everything that happens to us is to bless everybody around us. Yes, right. Well said. Do you see it that way? Do you see you getting new tools in your box? Do you see you getting new anointing and grace? Do you see you getting a new victory that somebody else is going to need? Mm-hmm. you got to see these things the right way. Yeah. yeah. And that's what the Bible's talking about right here. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction. That covers everything. Mm-hmm. So, look at this. He comforts us for ourselves, but also so that we may, may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction yes. with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Mm-hmm. Amen. And I want to just kind of touch on a couple things here. Affliction is something which causes pain and suffering through physical infirmity and our mental distress. I think that covers most of our problems, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you got something going on in your body, you got something going on in your head. <laughs> synonyms, look at this, synonyms for affliction to bring it down to, you know, just to the, the road level here. Calamity, disease, disorder, hardship, illness, infirmity, misery. Misery's kind of, you know, all inclusive. Yeah, yeah, it is. Pain, sickness, suffering, torment, and woe. So, it's all our affliction. Everything that stresses us out, everything that freaks us out, everything that comes against our body, every disease, every sick, everything, everything that yeah. comforts us in all of those things. Wow. And comfort actually, is, it doesn't mean what we think it means. It means to you know to come. It means to draw real close and comfort and soothe and take care of is what it means. It doesn't mean that God just says you got it. It means He draws close to us in that tough spot and He reveals who He is and His love and His care and His kindness to us in that tough place. And that's how He helps us get the victory right there. And then we take that relational promotion and whatever we get out of that and and, and how God came through for us. And then we see somebody in the same spot. Guess what? We take our victory and that neat relational thing God did for us, and we say, hey, guess what? You're in a tough spot, but let me tell you what God did for me yeah. when I was yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And one other thing on this is, you know when you got a victory in your life, you don't even have to pray about helping somebody else in that same spot you got your victory? It's always good to pray. I'm not taking away from prayer. Yeah. But we minister from our victories. Yes, and if you got a victory there, you have authority to help somebody else in that spot. You don't even have to ask if you can. You just step in and the anointing, the authority, the provision is already there because you got it in that same spot. And then when you got it, you can give it. Amen. Yeah, sometimes I think we pray too much about stuff. You know, whenever we see somebody tell us about God, I don't know. Yeah, God, well, yeah, yeah. I, I, prob- I probably could help. Probably. Hey, if God helped you in that spot, do what you can. Do what you can. And see what He does. He came through for you. Yeah. He'll come through for them. All right, just a little more. Just a little more. So when our God comes through for us, guys, it's. It's huge. It's for us, but it's also for everybody in our life. Amen. Makes us more like Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God. See, one way, one of the ways we help and encourage other people is through sharing our stories and our testimonies. That's why we do that here at the Gateway. We pass the microphone pretty much every service. Yeah. Yeah. And we do that because, see, your win and your victory in Jesus is going to help somebody else in their spot. Testimonies are awesome. Praise reports are awesome. That's why we do that. We do it. I mean, you guys have been, most of you guys have been here for a while. Yeah. And those of you who are newer to the church, I mean, that's what we do here. Yeah. Because, you know, your story is going to encourage me. Yeah. You know, the Lord God came through for you means he's going to come through for me. That's why we do That's what family does. Family shares those wins. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Yeah. You know? So, this, so we're going to kind of go to a time of sharing. Uh, I've got the mic here. All right, so this is some time for your stuff. And I, I just put like a suggestion down, a suggested list, okay? Right. Okay? So testimony time, please share brief. And you know, I kind of did a little something with brief there. 
<laughs> that was deliberate. I love you guys, but I don't want to. I don't want to go back to the first thing that ever happened in your childhood up to the present day. So let's. <laughs> There's time for that. So just spread out a little bit. Um, please share brief examples of when God came through for you when, with physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing. You know, your salvation moment. Or when, or when there was a, a recommitment or a restoration, you know, where things weren't going that well, and, you know, God grabbed your heart and you, you made things right. Financial provision, breakthrough in a place you were stuck. And I'll just speak about that. Oh, yeah. Food, housing, protection. So this is just kind of a, a, a suggestion here. Has anybody got something they want to share about how the Lord your God came through for you in one of those spots? Yes, Vienna. It's been a while back now, but um, I was having significant health issues. A lot of it was derived from a marriage that was failing, and I was very committed to that marriage. But eventually, um, God gave me the provision to work through the separation and ultimate divorce. And little did I know that the provision that God was giving me through all of that he also delivered provision, the same provision that he so graciously gave to me to another person wow. because she saw me walk through that. That's good. Amen. Amen. That's neat. You hear that? The, the same comfort he gave you, you were able to share with somebody else. Praise yeah. God. That's good, man. Anyone else? Has your God done anything for you in this place? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> last year, um, I, I've been blessed with three godly sisters, and last year it seemed that uh, uh, we were just getting hit with everything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one sister uh, was diagnosed with COVID, had to go home from work. Another who was a kidney uh, recipient uh, kept getting infections. Uh, other sister, her legs swelled up, and we couldn't figure out what was going on. I stepped off my porch, mm -hmm. didn't fall, didn't slip but just twisted my ankle and ended up with a really bad sprain. At first we thought it was broken. Um, it's off my feet for five weeks. It just seemed like just something was always happening. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was back on my feet and one night I went into my granddaughter's room late at night and uh, bent over to close her window. And as I got up, I put my hand on her hip to stand back up and felt the telltale signs of shingles, blisters mm -hmm. on my hip. Mm -hmm. And I just got mad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, uh, righteous anger rose up in me, and I said, I'm done. Yeah. No, Satan, I don't receive this. Oh, yeah. 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 I went to bed, and the next morning, those blisters were dried up, and two on, days yeah. later, every oh, sign of them was gone. Wow. I contacted oh, my sisters and said, yeah. look, I'm yeah. done. Yeah. We're done. And each of them, each of their issues resolved within a matter of days or well, wow. perhaps a week. Mm. And uh, that doesn't mean that we don't, you know, Satan doesn't try things. Right. But we just need to rise up in that anger and say, no, yeah. Satan, we're yeah. not doing this anymore. That's good. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's good. Yeah. That's wonderful. Praise God. Anyone else? One once, <laughs> one or twice. Anybody? All right. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Laura. Yeah. Well, I don't know if this is according to your categories up there, but yesterday, I, I don't know. Everything, I guess, went south for me. But yesterday morning, I. Anyway, I ended up with a, the bottom of the oven full of pie. The floor was, I got spilled on. I messed up the cupboard. I had uh, the refrigerator, yeah, I had to end up cleaning it up and everything. And I realized that I was only thinking about me. And I thought, Lord, I can't get out of this. And so the Lord provided. Leah's husband came over to see us, and he just said, you know, he just come over and said, said, I haven't been here for a while, and I need to come over. 
He had no idea what was going on in my life. I mm. never said anything to him. Good. He never said anything to me. But the Lord just says, he's here because I want you to know that you need to get your mind off of you and on somebody else. Yeah. So, as I said, that, good. that probably doesn't cover that. But no, that's good, Lord. If, yeah, that's right. All yeah, right. I can just yeah. not think about me and think about the Lord. Yeah. Things worked out. So Amen. in the end, I have got a clean refrigerator, I got a clean floor, I got a clean supper, and I got a clean oven. Amen. 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 For those of you who are looking for physical healing, um, back in 2004, I was very, very ill. And our pastor gave a message uh, to uh, Pastor Damien. And um, right as he was closing the invitation, he, was, he said, you know, I just want you to come and receive what God wants to give you. And mm. I didn't even wait for him to finish his prayer. I ran yeah. to the altar. Because I was just, God, I just want that healing. Mm -hmm. And a missionary from Costa Rica mm -hmm. was there in service. And she caught that hunger. Oh. And she followed me down to the altar. And she sat on those steps. Oh. And she prayed a very real prayer. Not, you know, a, yeah. a heady one. A real one for me. Mm -hmm. And interceded. And I looked up at her. And she was just saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. And it must have been a hundred times. Mm -hmm. But after that, yeah. I could feel the power of God come down and she just leaned over and said would you please receive that would you please receive it and he did he Ooh. did he healed me and three weeks later I was completely healed in the, because of Jesus Amen. and I just wanted to share this verse that, that uh, if when you're going through the valley it says how enriched are they who find their strength in the Lord Ooh. within their hearts are the highways of holiness even when their paths wind through the dark valley of tears, dig deep yeah. and find a pleasant pool yeah. where others find only pain. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Pastor Dana has given us how to dig deep and find mm -hmm. that blessing. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes, praise God. Um, I, with God's help, overcame a Phobia. My definition of phobia is a fear that is over. Let's see. A fear that is overpowered uh -huh. and becomes more intense, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyway, this phobia that overtook my life when I was about, let's say, four years old. Mm -hmm kept me restricted from many of the pleasures I could have had until I was almost 70. Wow. <laughs> but it was with the Lord's help uh -huh. yeah. that I was able to shed this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now I can I can reclaim that all of those those things. Yeah. 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 I might confess that this overwhelming, mm. um, enormous mm. thing that obstructed my life mm. was froze. Mm. Okay. Mm. And so it's, I mean, that's, you know, sounds crazy. But I feel the freedom that I didn't have for my time. Thank you, God. And it was through I had no gain on it whatsoever mm -hmm. until I, I really focused on the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and He was my overcomer. Yeah. Yes. 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 Amen. Praise God. As soon as you and Jesus connect, yeah, and you commit to walk it out with Him, the restoration of the years begins. Mm -hmm. Restoration of the years. 
And until you see it, you can't deal with it, church. God doesn't meet you where you're not at. <laughs> he meets you where you are. Amen. Always where we are. Praise God. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Do I have one more before we jump into something else? Okay. What? Yes, Carolyn. I've had so many few physical healings, I wouldn't know where to start. And so, <laughs> same with my family. Uh, yeah. I had a girl one time that had a pulmonating staph infection. Mm -hmm. And she was just totally out of it that night. The wow. fever was unbelievable. My mm -hmm. husband said, take her to the hospital. I said, you know what they'll do? They'll put her in isolation. Mm -hmm. I said, she's not able to handle that. Mm -hmm. because she was young. Mm -hmm. And I had remembered a pastor telling me that God loved my children more than I did. And so I sat up in bed that night, and I, as my husband was taking a shower, I said, Lord, you know that my, my in-laws are coming against my family, and they want to take my children. And if she dies, because this was very prevalent in the area I lived in, and there was no cure for staff back then. Mm -hmm. And I said, if she dies, I lose my whole family. Wow. Mm. And I remember going to sleep that night, and the next morning, I didn't hear a thing the rest of the night. The next morning I woke up and she was standing beside me and she said, Mom, I took a shower and all those pustules, I don't know what she called them, are gone. Wow. wow. And Amen. I promised my husband I would take her to the doctor. So I took her to our friend, the doctor, and he said, I'll tell you in three days, but it couldn't possibly have been that because I could find pustules that had broken in her ears or throat, everything. And Three days later, he didn't call, and I called the office, and she said, it was staff. And God got her through it, and I've had so many healings in our family. It's just Amen. unbelievable. God is a healer. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's good. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's good. That's good. Praise God. Thank you for sharing. Isn't that good? Encouraging? Amen. But you know... I mean, it's just a few examples. All of us have many, many testimonies of God meeting us in all these different places. Yeah. I, I, I bet you we have forgotten, all of us who walk with God over 10 years, I bet we've forgotten at least 100, 200, 300 times where God came through. No. Yeah. We've forgotten more than we remember, I promise you. <laughs> yeah. But you know, he, he just he comes through all the time for us. Thank you for sharing. You know, be encouraged, though. And I, I, what I like, too, is, you know, what we saw from, from a few of the interviews, they said, look, this is it. Yeah. Now's the time. No more. This has to stop. God, if you don't come through, it, it's going to fall apart. Yeah. But, you know, that's more of an attitude than it is always an absolute. Because the thing is, is even if everything isn't going to fall apart if he doesn't come through with this thing, if it's a real need, act like it. Yeah. Amen. Lord, you, oh, yeah. I need you desperately. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't, don't be so recreational with your needs. <laughs> yeah. So praise God. So thanks again for sharing. Um, but I'd like for you to just think one more. Just think of just if you've got a need today, if you're here and you have a need today, I thought right now in your life, mm -hmm. if you've got a need, okay, and you, and you know it if you do. And I, I don't have to coach you until you figure it out. If it's a real need, you know about it. There's a lot of wants in here, but I don't care about that. Look at that. <laughs> the needs. If you got a need, think about that need right now. See that need in your life, your body, your mind, whatever. See the need. See it. Can you see it? Okay. Watch it. Just keep your eyes on that need. And know what matter what. Now look up here one second. No matter what your need is, Remember that Matthew 19, 26, the third part, with, with God, all things are possible. Church, your God is big enough. Your God is powerful enough. And most of all, this is the most important part. Your God loves you more than enough, and he wants to help you today. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to... We're going to move into something else as we, as we wrap up the service. Let's pray. Lord, thank you yes. that you love us so much. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you that you, you're the Lord our God who does care, who does meet our needs, who does take care of whatever. Lord, whatever is important to us is important to you. Thank you, God. And thank you that you're the same today as you've always been. And Lord, you, you, you've healed countless people through the years. You've met needs. You've done. Lord, you just really take good care of your people, Lord. Since, Lord, since you, basically since Adam and Eve, God, you've been taking care of people really well. Yeah. And thank you for that. And today, if there's a need in this house, we thank you for meeting. We thank you for meeting. We know the provisions there, Jesus. We thank you for meeting that need. Help us to be open to, to, to look to the Lord our God in this place to meet that need. And thank you so much. In Jesus' name, thank you. And before we do some stuff here, I'm going to close out online. Those of you online, the Lord your God loves you, and he will meet your need right there at your house, in your car, wherever you're at. You look to him. Draw on him. Trust him. Give him praise and thanks for meeting that need right now. And just see what happens. See what happens. Enjoy Jesus the rest of your day. Thank you for joining us.